So we're going to go through the day tank system, how it operates, and any troubleshooting that's associated with it. This is the pipe coming from the intermediate tank outside. So this is where the fuel supply comes into the day tank. It comes through a valve that is labeled normally open. You would only close this valve if you need to change the filter or service something in here. Otherwise, this is always open to keep your fuel supply on. This next valve here is a fusible link valve. In the event of a fire, this will shut off the fuel supply to prevent it from getting loose in the building. Then here we have the uh, filter for the incoming fuel. And this is part of your daily inspection. You check the filter bowl for any residue, any water. If you start seeing any, then you have to change the filter. There's a ele uh, filter element uh, wrench here. This is sized for taking the bowl off. So in order to uh, change this out, you would shut off the valve, get a bucket, drain the uh, fuel out of the bottom of the filter, take that off, install the new filter element, reinstall the bowl, open the valve back up. Continuing on through the piping, here we have the meter. This logs the total fuel into the day tank. This is a very important part of the system. It's part of your daily readings for monitoring your fuel use in the system. Then continuing on down the piping, we have a pair of solenoid valves. These are valves that uh, stay closed. To The first one here is a normally closed solenoid valve that opens whenever your pump is running to fill. Then we have a normally open solenoid valve that in the event of an emergency or an overfill, it will close to prevent an overfill and a fuel spill. We also have a hand priming pump here. Basically, if you have run out of fuel out in your tank or somehow lost prime, you can open this valve. Note that this valve is tagged normally closed. You'd open this valve hand prime until you see the fuel flowing solid through the filter, then close the valve, then you can resume normal operation. Okay, continuing on through the piping system here, the smaller pump here is the pump that is used to fill the day tank. That's a normal fill cycle. Then we have an overfill pump down pump, which we'll explain the function of that in a minute. But under the normal fill cycle, this pump operates whenever there's a call for fuel. The day tank is set up to auto fill through the control system. So over here we have a control panel. This controls all the functions of the day tank. Under normal status, the power switch should always be on and the control power light should always be on. That indicates you have power and it's in the automatic mode. When the fuel level drops in the day tank to the float switch, it will turn it on and you will see the day tank fill pump on light turn on. You'll also see the actuator valve at immediate intermediate tank light turn on. That indicates that the motorized valve outside has opened and we have fuel coming into the system. So basically we would see on normal operation about a 10 to 15 minute fill cycle and it'll just come on as needed depending on your fuel consumption in the plant. The green light will come on showing the pump running, the actuator valve, it'll run for about 10 minutes and under normal operation it will shut off. Now we also have uh, some alarms here. The uh, first alarm we see is the uh, pump timeout alarm. The most common uh, cause of this would be if you ran out of fuel in your intermediate tank or if your fuel filter was plugged or you had some ice in the line or something. Then if the pump ran and it didn't get the tank full, then you would get an alarm horn outside. This red light would turn on and in order to clear that light, we'd come in and press the silence, timeout, and restart pump. That'll clear that alarm and it'll start another normal fill cycle. The next red light we have is an overfill. This would be in the event that something fails in the pump controls and you get a high level in your day tank. If that happens, again, you'll get a, an alarm outside. You come in, you'll see this red light on. Here we have a push to silence button. If you do that, it will silence the alarm horn outside, but this red light will remain on until the fuel level is corrected. So if you have an overfill condition, it means something has failed in the controls. You need to do some troubleshooting, find out what's wrong, and clear that problem. We also have a low level alarm on the day tank panel. Uh, this would be in the event of if, if you ran out of fuel or something went wrong with your controls and you failed to uh, fill it back up. If the level gets too low in here, then the alarm light will come on, the alarm horn will sound outside. Again, when you come into the plant, you can silence that alarm horn by pushing this button. This light will remain on until you correct the low fuel level. Now, I want to note here that the switch gear is also tied into this low fuel level, and it has a two-hour timer. So if you get a low fuel level, it will allow the power plant to run for up to two hours. Uh, it may be set different in some plants, but typically it's two hours. 
and then after two hours it will actually shut the power plant down and you'll get a light on the controls on the switch gear saying that you have a low fuel level. So you'd have to come in, reprime the system, get it back up and running, and then you can reset that alarm, start the generators back up, and resume a normal fill cycle. But basically we have that protection put in to prevent a situation where you would run out of fuel and uh, run the engines dry and lose prime on it. Now, on the day tank we also have a um, manual float gauge and uh, the system is designed to operate between three quarters and full. So under normal operation in your daily checks you would check this and you should see it between three quarters and full. And if you had an overfill or a low level condition then you would also see that on the gauge. Now, in the event of an overfill, if we hit this overfill condition, we have a second pump on this day tank that actually pumps the day tank down to relieve the overfill condition. That's this pump. It's called PDF2. It's the overfill pump, and it's set up to run on a four-minute cycle. That's long enough to run the fuel back down in the normal operating range on the day tank. It pumps fuel out of the day tank back into the intermediate tank, and that's put in as a safety. We can actually test that pump operation by pushing the press to test button. And when we do that, we see the pump light come on and we hear the pump operate. Now, in the event, if you ever had to drain this day tank down to uh, uh, change the piping or work on something, you could actually use this pump to pump it down and without having to deal with any buckets or drums, you could pump the fuel back out to the tank. So, um, I pointed out this press to test button. We have three press to test buttons on this panel and as part of the monthly procedure those should be checked. The press to test for the pump down, you'll hear the pump run, you'll see the light turn on. We also have the ability to test the normal fill pump, the primary pump PDF1. If we press that button, we see the light come on, actuator valve is open and we hear the pump running and we can actually see fuel pumping through the filter so we know that that one works. The other one we have is a press to test the alarm horn. This verifies that the alarm horn outside works in the event any of these alarm conditions occur. And we can hear the alarm horn sound outside, verify that it works. Okay, in the event of emergency, if you have a controls failure or if the pump fails, uh, the system has been set up to allow the day tank to be manually filled using the hand pump. Now in order to do that, you would first have to go outside to the intermediate tank and take a, a pair of pliers and actually open the actuated ball valve. So you turn the actuated ball valve to the open position. Then you come in here, open the manual valve for the hand priming, and then you can use this pump and basically hand pump the tank and monitor the level gauge and pump it up till it's full. So in an emergency, you have the ability to keep the plant online by hand pumping and manually filling this tank as needed.